you have probably heard of these words before. I before now, I would certainly imagine. Central tendency is a distribution is an estimate of the as as an estimate of the center of a distribution of values. There are three major types: the mode, the median, and the mean. The mode is simply the most frequently occurring value in any set of scores. You use the mode as your measure of central tendency when you have nominal level data because the other, if, if your variables are measured in a different way, those other statistics don't make sense. So if you have nominal level data, for instance, major, and you have a number of students um, that are uh, a business major, business or social science majors, or math majors. I'll just go with these three. And these are the three possibilities. This is a nominally measured variable. And you want to report out on the most frequent major. Well, you wouldn't use a median or a mean because this is nominally measured. So you could just use mode. The most frequent major at the college is social science. Let's say there's, I don't know, 250 people who are social scientists. Put that 250 down here. There are, let's say, 60 people who are business majors, and there are 100 people who are math majors. The mode is social science, used for nominal level data. It doesn't make sense to say that the mean of the majors is this, or what, what have you. Um, so you, so it's the preferred measure of central tendency for nominal level variables or let's say any type of categorical variable that um, is highly skewed to one side. We'll talk about what that means in a second. So the median is the next one. And the median is the exact middle of a set of values. In order to figure out the median, you just could list all the scores in numerical order and then locate the score in the center. That's the median. The beauty of the median is that it's not impacted by outliers. And so I like to use median when I am talking about the average age of our students at the college. because you could have one student that is 65 years old, another student that is 70 years old, you could have everybody else be 22 years old. But those, that 65 year old and that 70 year old, those numbers will impact a mean, but it, they will not impact the median. The median is the exact middle. And we'll have an exercise uh, later on to demonstrate exactly how you can compute the median. You don't need mathematics in order to compute the median. The mean is the most commonly used. And so when we think about an average, we're typically thinking about the mean. Essentially, you add up all the values um, in your data and divide by the number of values. It is sensitive to outliers and as you can see down here it is used with interval and ratio level data. It makes sense to use the mean with that level with numerical data.
outliers can occur because of some anomaly, some anom anomaly, some exception to the rule, or an extreme score, or outliers can occur due to error. And so it's important to know how the outliers impact the mean, because then your mean could be skewed. That's why it's nice to when you have a lot of outliers or different outliers to be able to use the median. In a normal distribution, all three of these are the same. They'll end up being the same value in the normal distribution. All missing data is excluded when calculating these measures of central tendency. So leave out missing data. Yikes. Okay, let's talk about the next descriptive statistics for one variable. And that is dispersion. Dispersion is the spread of the values around the middle. It's the spread of the values around the central tendency. And the two statistics are range and standard deviation. The range is simply the, let me get my pen. The range is simply the high point minus the low point. So here's the high point in your set of scores, and this is the low point. And the range is just the high point minus the low point. So if you have age, let's say, as a variable, and as I mentioned previously, let's say you have somebody at your college who is 70, and you have somebody at your college who is 17, the minimum value is 17, the maximum value is 70. The range is just the high point minus the low point. The range in this case would be 53. Standard deviation is a more accurate and detailed estimate of dispersion. And you hear we'll be using standard deviation a lot because it's the basis for many of the statistics yet to come. It shows the relationship that a set of scores has to the mean of the sample. It's sensitive to outliers but not as sensitive to outliers and it is basically tells us the variation in the distribution of scores. It's always positive cannot be negative. Again, just like um, the mean and the range, it's used with interval and ratio level data. If you have a standard deviation of zero, then you don't have a, va a variable that varies. You would have a constant. And so it shows how the data in the data set are related to the mean. This ends this part of the module's presentation. Please move on to review the next part